confidence interval for population parameter. In this case, we are working with population mean. Our very first definition is basically talking about what is a point estimate. A point estimate is a single value estimate for a population parameter. The most unbiased point estimate of population mean or mu is the sample mean that we denote by x bar. The next definition is an interval estimate. An interval estimate is an interval or range of values that we use to estimate a population parameter, in this case population mean. We need more definition before we jump into calculation. The level of confidence that we denote by C is the probability that the interval estimate contains the population parameter, assuming that the estimation process is repeated a large number of times. Remember how we did the calculation for critical values. When we are saying that C or the level of confidence is 90%, it means that the blue shaded region has area 90%. 100% minus 90% gives us 10%. 10% divided by 2 gives us 5%. 5% of the area is on the left, the other 5% is on the right hand side. If we use our calculator using inverse norm, we can find the critical value and as you remember, when we are talking about critical value, the critical value is a value that separates sample statistics that are probable from sample statistics that are improbable or unusual. Let's take a look at our calculator and see how we can calculate different types of critical values for different confidence levels. So we are using Calculate84, the same app that you're using in the class. In order to calculate the critical value for 90% level of confidence, we go to second bars and we find inverse norm. So second bars, inverse norm is what you're looking for. So let me erase this second bars and inverse norm. Here we need to enter the value for the area. The area to the left hand side is 5%. So 0 0.05 comma. Now we need to enter mu. The mean for standard normal distribution is always zero. Then put a comma. Now you need the standard deviation. The standard deviation for standard normal distribution is always 1. So when you hit the enter, you get negative 1.6448, which rounds to negative 1.645. This is the value on the left hand side. If you ignore the negative sign, you get the critical value on the right hand side. With the same process, you can find the rest of the critical values for different level of confidence. For 90% level of confidence, the critical value is 1.645, 95% level of confidence, 1.96, and 99% level of confidence, 2.575. In this example, an econ researcher is collecting data about grocery store employees in a county. The data listed below represents a random sample of number of hours worked by 40 employees from several grocery stores in the county. Question says, find a point estimate of population mean mu. So this is the data that we have. We have 30 hours, 20 hours, 31 hours, 44, 31, 25. As you can see, 40 data are listed here for you. Let us find the sample mean, which is 
the point estimate for population mean. The sample mean, which is denoted by x bar, is the summation of all x values, which is 1,184, divided by n, n is 40. We have 40 numbers in our collection, which is about 29.6 hours. What's the meaning of this number? The point estimate for the mean number of hours worked by grocery store employees in this county is 29.6 hours. But does it mean that it, the actual population mean? It means that if someone else take a random sample, they get the exact same 29.6? Probably not. So how many times do you have to repeat this process? Instead of repeating the process, you're going to use confidence interval. Given a level of confidence like C, we can define something that we call the margin of error or E, which sometimes is called the maximum error of estimate or error tolerance. This is the greatest possible distance between the point estimate, which coming from the sample, and the value of parameter it is estimating. For a population mean, like mu, when sigma, or the standard deviation, is given, the margin of error is E equals to Zc, or the critical value, times sigma sub x bar. Remember that sigma sub x bar is defined as sigma over square root of n. We need these conditions to be met as well. First of all, the sample is taken randomly, and two, the normality is met as well. It means that either you have a normal population, or n for the sample size is more than or equals to 30. Okay, now that we defined the margin of error, let's go over a few examples. Question says, find the margin of error of the following case. Use the data and a 95% confidence level to find the margin of error of the mean number of hours worked by grocery store employees and assume that the population standard deviation is 7.9 hours. So this is the data that we saw, 40 of them, we calculated x bar, now we are interested in finding the margin of error. Since we have a 95% level of confidence, it means that the critical value is 1.96. The z-score that is corresponding to 95% confidence level is 1.96. Let me share the calculator and show you how to find that number. So remember that when you have a 90% confidence level, the area to the left is going to be 5%. But when you have 95% confidence level, 100% minus 95% gives you 5%. 5% divided by 2 is 0 0.025. So click on second, and then wars, and then inverse norm. When you click on inverse norm, the area to the left side is going to be 0 0.025. The mean is 0 with standard deviation of 1. So if you enter this data, you get negative 0.9599. And as you can see, for 95% level of confidence, the critical value for the positive part is 1.96. Okay, we have all the missing information. This implies that 95% of the area under the standard normal curve falls within 1.96 standard deviations of the mean. So basically, you have 95%, 5% divided by 2 
gives you 0 0.025. This is the area that we entered in our calculator. Using this information, we can calculate the margin of error. Why is that? Because we have our sigma, we have our n, we found zc, and the formula says for the margin of error, you need to multiply zc by sigma divided by square root of n. Well, zc is 1.96, sigma is given in the question, the population standard deviation, 7.9, divided by square root of n, n is 40. We have 40 hours in our collection. So we calculated each one of these, and then the margin of error is about 2.5 hours. What's the meaning of that? We are 95% confident that the margin of error for the population mean is about 2.4 hours. Okay, what is the next step in this process? In the next step, we need some guidelines to construct our confidence interval. In constructing a confidence interval for population mean, this is the case that sigma is given to you. Verify that sigma is known, the sample is random, and either the population is normal or n is more than equals to 30. Next, find the sample statistics, which are x bar and n. x bar is the mean of your sample. You're going to add all of the numbers together, divided by n. And then find the critical value, zc that corresponds to the given level of confidence step four make sure to find the margin of error which is zc times sigma divided by square root of n and finally find the left and right endpoints to construct your confidence interval the left endpoint is x bar minus e and the right endpoint is x bar plus e so mu or the population mean is bounded between x bar minus e and x bar plus e. Okay, give us an example. Use the data for the number of hours worked by employees in a county, construct a 95% confidence interval. And again, assume that the population standard deviation is 7.9 hours. And these are the data. And remember that for a 95% level of confidence, the critical value is 1.96. So let's begin using the values of ZC to be 1.96, sigma, which is given to us as 7.9 hours, and N to be 40. We calculated the margin of error, which is ZC times sigma over square root of N. This is 1.96 times 7.9 over square root of 40. And again, ZC is 1.96. It's a common mistake that students plug in 95% here. ZC is the critical value that is associated to 95%. Sigma is given to us as 7.9 and N is 40. And as we saw, if we take a look at this number, we have 2.9 hours as the margin of error. Okay, let us construct the left endpoint, which is x bar minus e, or 29.6 minus 2.4, or 27.2 hours. For the right endpoint, you just do the addition, x bar plus margin of error, or 29.6 plus 2.4, which gives you 32. What's the meaning of that? It means that the mean population is in between 27.2 hours and 32 hours. Well, if you want to visualize this, this is our confidence interval. Range of values that are possible values for the population mean. So how do we write the final report? With 95% confidence, 
you can say that the population mean number of hours worked is between 27.2 hours and 32 hours. So this is all the algebra behind this. How do we use our calculator to make sure we have a correct computations? Let us pull up our calculator. Calculate 84 and show you how to find the function on your calculator. So let me share the screen with you. So we have our calculate 84. Now you need to click on stat and find tests. Between all of these tests, you need your interval, and in this case, Z interval. Why Z interval? Because population standard deviation is given to you. So you're going to use Z interval. We don't have the actual data calculated in our calculator, but I have my stats. I already calculated uh, X bar, and I already know what are the values, so I can use the stats instead. If you decide to enter all of these numbers into your calculator, you can select your L1, which is the column that you enter this information in. But since I already know what sigma is, X bar is, I already calculated my point estimate. So my sigma is 7.9. My X bar, if I'm not mistaken, was 29.6. N is 40. Level of confidence is 95%, so 0.95. And let us calculate this. So take a look. And I do the calculation. My left endpoint is 27.2, which is exactly the same as my calculation doing the algebra. And my right endpoint is 20. 32.0, which is the exact same number that you see in your calculation. So let me show you one more time. Click on stat, go to tests, and now click on the interval. If you already entered your data in your calculator, you can go to the data itself. Otherwise, click on stats, enter each piece of information into your calculator. Sigma which is population standard deviation is 7.9. X bar that I calculated in the very first slide is 29.6. N, I have 40 data in my collection, and the level of confidence is 95%. And I did the calculation. I have the exact same values for the confidence interval. Let's take a look at another example. A college admissions director wants to estimate the mean age of all students currently enrolled in the college. In a random sample of 20 students, the mean age is found to be 22.9 years. Okay, we found the mean to be 22.9 years. From past studies, the standard deviation is known to be 1.5 years and the population is normally distributed. We want to construct a 90% confidence interval of the population mean age. Very good. So let us begin. First of all, since we have a 90% confidence interval, it means that the critical value is 1.645. Since sigma is given to you, where is sigma? Sigma is 1.5 years. When it says from past studies, the standard deviation is known, it means that your population has a standard deviation of 1.5 years. The population is also normally distributed. We want to use the margin of error formula to calculate that. Since n is equal to 20 and x bar is 22.9, sigma is 1.5, and ZC is 1.645, the margin of error can be calculated using the formula that we introduced in our class. So one more time, N is 20 because you have 20 students in your sample. 
x bar or the point estimate is 22.9 because it says in a random sample of 20 students, the mean age is found to be 22.9. The standard deviation is 1.5. This is the standard deviation of population, everyone. And ZC is 1.645. Remember the formula for the margin of error. This is zc times sigma divided by square root of n, which is going to be 1.9, 1 1.645 times 1.5 divided by square root of 20, or about 0.6 year. So this is the margin of error that you calculated. So the 90% confidence interval can be written as x bar plus minus the margin of error or 22.9 plus minus 0.6 year or you can officially write it this way the left endpoint is x bar minus e which is 22.9 minus 0.6 or 22.3 the right endpoint can be written as x bar plus e or 22.9 plus 0.6 which is 23.5 well, what's the meaning of that? It means that your mu is bounded between these two numbers. What is mu? Mu is population mean. You can visualize the confidence interval this way. All of these possible values in between 22.3 and 23.5 can be population mean. But we are not 100% confident about that. We are only 90% confident that the mean age of the population is between 22.3 and 23.5. So the question is, what if sigma is missing? If sigma is missing, the margin of error follows a TC. It means that to find a critical value, we have to use a t distribution. If the distribution of a random variable x is approximately normal, then t, which is defined as x bar minus mu, divided by s over square root of n, follows a t distribution. Critical values of t are denoted by t sub c. We have several properties for the t distribution. First of all, the mean, median, and mode of the t-distribution are all equal to zero. Two, t-distribution is bell-shaped and symmetric about the mean. Three, the total area under the t-distribution curve is 100% or one. Number four, the tails in the t-distribution are thicker than those in the standard normal distribution. The standard deviation of the t-distribution changes with the sample size, but it's greater than 1. Now, the t-distribution is a family of curves, each determined by a parameter that we call degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom, which sometimes abbreviated as DF, are the number of free choices left after a sample statistic such as x bar is calculated. When you use a t-distribution to estimate a population mean, the degrees of freedom are equal to 1 less than the sample size. So the degrees of freedom is defined as n minus 1. Number 7. As the degrees of freedom increase, the t-distribution approaches a standard normal distribution. After 30 degrees of freedom, the t-distribution is very close to standard normal distribution. So the blue graph is basically the standard normal distribution. And the black graph is a t-distribution when the degrees of freedom is 2 or the sample size is 3. So as you can see, as we increase the, the sample size, we increase the degrees of freedom and the graph getting closer and closer to a standard normal distribution. Okay. So what's the use of it? First of all, let us talk about the t-distribution and the critical value for a t-distribution. For a t-distribution, if you have a level of confidence, 80%, 90%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1
98%, this is on the very first row of your table, the level of confidence. If your calculator doesn't have inverse T, you have to use a T distribution table. And the degrees of freedom are located on the very first column. The intersection between the degrees of freedom, this column, and the first row gives you the critical value that you're looking for. What do I mean by that? You randomly select 16 coffee shops and measure the temperature of the coffee sold at each. The sample mean temperature is 162 degrees with a sample standard deviation of 10 degrees. You want to construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean temperature of coffee sold. Assume the temperatures are approximately normally distributed. So what information do we have here? Sigma is missing. Sigma or population standard deviation is not there. So I expect you to ask, hey, then what is this? Standard deviation is 10 degrees. This is for your sample. There is no information about population here. So what's the meaning of that? Since the temperatures are approximately normally distributed, we're going to use a T distribution n is equal to 16. The average temperature is 162 degrees. S or the sample standard deviation is 10. C or the level of confidence is 95%. And the degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1, is 15. The critical value is 2.131. How? Let us go back to our table. This is the table for the t-distribution. On the very first row, you have the level of confidence. And since it's 95% level of confidence, we look at the 95%. And then, since the degrees of freedom is 15, we look at the intersection between 15 and 95%, which is 2.131. Okay. Now that we have our critical value, we can construct the margin of error. Margin of error is Tc, S divided by square root of n, which is 2.131, multiplied by 10, which is your S, divided by square root of 16. It gives you approximately 5.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that you have all the pieces of information, we can construct the left endpoint and the right endpoint. For the left endpoint, you have x bar minus e, which becomes 156.7 degrees, and the right endpoint, x bar plus e, which gives you 167.3 degrees. So the population mean is in between these two temperatures, but we are only 95% confident about it. They're going to say that, hey, with 95% confidence, they can say that the population mean temperature of coffee sold is between 156.7 degrees and 167.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so how do we use our calculator? Calculate 84 can help us to find this number as well. But how? Let us share the screen and show you how to construct your confidence interval using your calculator. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on stat and I'm going to go to tests. Now I'm looking for T interval. Why T interval? Because I don't have sigma. Sigma is missing. If sigma was there, you're going to use your z interval. But since sigma is missing, you're going to use your t interval. We don't have the actual data, but we have the statistics for that. What is x bar? x bar 
is the average of your sample, which is 162. So 162. What is S of X? It's 10 degrees. So type 10 degrees. And the sample size is 16 coffee shops. So change that to 16. And the level of confidence is 95%. So let us calculate that. And as you can see, your left endpoint is 156.7, which is exactly as the number that you got on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, you have 167.3, which is exactly the same as the number on the right-hand side. Let me show you one more time how to use your calculator to construct the confidence interval for population mean. So click on stat and then go to tests. We're looking for interval, not Z interval, but T interval. Click on stat, enter the information. X bar is the sample mean, 162 degrees. S of X is 10 degrees. N is 16. N is the sample size. And the confidence level is 95%. Hit calculate, and it gives you the left endpoint and the right endpoint with more accuracy.